They went from this to this. Ember did exactly what you asked, and I think you're gonna like what you see. Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here with Bish's RV, here with a, technically a new model, but a uh, uh, viewer inspired and request fulfilled version of a previously existing floor plan. The new, I think they're calling it 24 MSL. At your request, Ember took a, their very popular double over double bunkhouse arrangement here in their touring series, and folks said that that missile bunk, that convertible removable bunk situation that you guys have, it's, it's the coolest thing that you do. Why don't you do it in everything? And Ember said, we will. How about that? So they've, they've taken out uh, a fixed, you have to have two fixed bunks things. And they, instead of forcing you to have a camp kitchen, they've created a system here that lets you do basically anything you want, like a choose your own adventure book. You can have double over double bunks. That's how it ships from the factory. But the bunks can each kind of split and have to create single over single or single over double Jack and Jill bunks. You can create a desk space with it with like a shelf above. You can totally get all that stuff out of the way for cargo mode. You can even get crazy with the Ember Track system that they have in here and all the weight that it holds and do things like use it, uh, like, like mount a hammock inside of it, uh, like legitimately. This is a system that can do things that other RVs just flat can't. Now, I don't know that they necessarily needed to maintain the rear cargo loading door that they had on this one. But I'm not mad that they did because if you have things like a kayak, you want to give it a kayak uh, oscopy right up the backside of the sucker, you could do that. And it still has all the touring edition things like the uh, the torsion axle and suspension system, the Goodyear tires, the TPMS, uh, the uh, you know composite walls and floor construction. All that stuff is still maintained right here. Um, you still have that optional to, uh, 400 watt solar package and 2000 watt inverter. You can slap some lithium batteries into this sucker. There's all the touring things that the 24 BH and MBH did. This does, it just uh, now has the benefit of the MSL system and I think it's very, very cool and I'm excited to see if, uh, well, you, <laughs> I guess be careful what you ask for, hopefully you like it. <laughs> so the, the thing to remember with this one, again, maybe not an original floor plan, but that doesn't mean there's anything like it. As weird as that sounds, Ember doing Ember things, they always find a, uh, a way to put a twist on a, on a floor plan that makes it uh, just different from anything. Now, one of the things to remember here, this, like, you can describe this, I think, as a bunkhouse, is how most people will by default. But the bunks are removable, and that dinette is not uh, your only seating option. If you wanted to, you could get, like, a, a theater seat in there. So if you're like, I like this, I want that storage locker, but I want something that's not like 40 feet long. Um, you know, I like uh, maybe that private front true queen bedroom or some of the other features that are on this RV, like the nearly seven foot tall floor to ceiling nature of it. Well, uh, this could easily be a couple's model or a solo camper as well, because this rear area, as you're kind of noticing, is highly configurable. It can be whatever you want it to be. Now, they recently changed this over. Instead of the little mini, what's called stub wall, the little miniature wall, you now have um, these, uh, the, these like posts, basically. But the thing is, uh, even these are configurable. Even these are like E-Track, basically. So these steps, if you want to take these out and rearrange these steps so that they're higher or lower or whatever the case may be, you can do that. Um, the other thing is, you might look at them and kind of wonder something. They are removable. If you don't want those there at all, and you want a maximum cargo availability space, you can do whatever you want with this space. But uh, it, it ships from the factory with all the equipment uh, necessary to create a double over double bunkhouse. But uh, you can also uh, convert it over into some sort of like office arrangement. And of course, you can get everything totally out of the way for cargo mode. Uh, mode. I don't know. I, that was a weird way of saying mode. I'm not sure how I even manage it. Or you could do something fun like you're looking at here because this, uh, they call it Ember Track. Basically, uh, it uses conventional E Track hookups. Uh, you can customize things. Like, there's a whole world of like E Track accessories. You want to set up the, uh, the, the, the hammock? You, you can. I mean, you can do a bunch of stuff. And it seems crazy. Like, why are there USB plugs up there? Remember, you could have a, uh, a double top bunk or a single top bunk. 
um, and they want that person on a rainy day to be able to keep their devices charged up. Down here in the corner, they also have some uh, household outlets. There's also another set of USB outlets over on the right-hand side, right next to the uh, the lighting back here for this area. You might have noticed how the lights kind of flickered a little bit right there. I'm talking about over here, you can actually just turn the ceiling lights on and off, plus some more USB plugs there. It is anything you want it to be. Now, uh, Miss Ashley, the uh, one of the founders of the company, she does not love the orange steps that are included on this. I think it's actually very cool. I think it fits their, uh, their, their whole family of color schemes very well. But she doesn't like how it doesn't match maybe necessarily the inside of the RV. What is your impression of those orange steps? Because like I said, personally, I really like them. Now there is, in case you're wondering, you do have yourself a, uh, a little bug screen door right here in case you want to keep all that out of the way. Um, and uh, the entry door and the door in the bedroom, they're both nice big wide doors and they do have privacy shades built right into them. I just have this one in full viewing mode because to be fair, one deficiency this RV does have, it does not have awesome campsite window coverage. However, if I slide over here to the seating area, especially if you're using, if you have that big cargo door open and in screen mode, it does kind of change the matrix and the equation a little bit. However, if that is closed off and it's just a solid wall staring at you, yeah, the RV certainly lacks traditional window coverage on the door side. Now you can see that little sky, uh, 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 stargazer skylight that they have up top there in the bedroom. That does kind of help. And notice how they have just this awesome toe kick through the entire kitchen. So you can really stand like right up to, it's like a two inch overlap. So you can actually, like you won't get lower back pain trying to stand there and make some silver dollar flapjacks or whatever the case may be. Touring Edition versus Overland picks up things like that electric space heating fireplace, but all your embers use these 12 volt uh, entertainment like TV soundbar combos. But notice, even though the RV is like seven foot tall, they don't commit that sin that so many manufacturers do of mounting the TV all the way up to the ceiling where it's not good for anybody. They actually mount it down where it makes a little bit of sense. And uh, in these touring editions, when you see fans, you get the big fans, man. Um, I'll open all this kitchen cabinetry for you here momentarily, but they have also uh, upgraded to uh, the uh, capacity there for a convection air fryer oven, which I think is very, very cool. Now, your countertop space in this is kind of limited, so I do really appreciate how they uh, add that countertop extension leaf right there. And I would say that right below it would make just the absolute perfect place for uh, a wastebasket, but you'll see that below the oven, they've got that already kind of nailed and covered for you. Um, you know, so you're, you're good to go there. Now, your air conditioner on this is 15,000 BTU. Their, uh, their, their dinette, uh, like um, their, their bed base, their dinette base, it's all a welded uh, aluminum cage. And then if we look a little bit further, uh, you can see you have those easy access slide out storage totes. And that's a, a carpetless floor flush slide system. That's really what allows this RV. If you want to swap in like a, um, a theater seat, you can do that here. And the kitchen storage is fantastic for no bigger than this RV is overall. Um, they, they really nail this whole area very, very well. And then of course, uh, behind the entertainment center, you've got that literal walk-in Plazatainment Center. It's a pantry, it's a closet, it's the entertainment center. Those shelves are removable, adjustable. Uh, you've got a hanging rod at the top of it if you're so inclined and something else that's really, really cool. You have an awning dimmer switch right down here at ground level. So you can reach in the door and dim the lights down if it's getting late, you don't wanna bug the neighbors, but you're not ready to call it quits. And then you got the little amber lights. Um, there'll be several of those, like one there by the door, one in the bathroom, where if you do come in, uh, maybe even if you're two sheets to the wind and you wanna see what you're doing and not, you know, not do the, uh, the blind man's bluff and walk through here, hoping that you're not smashing into stuff and waking up kids if you're using it in bunk mode. Well, you don't, you don't have to do that here. Now they don't do front windshields. Instead, what they do is their Stargazer skylight, which is just basically a giant Euro window that opens up. Um, and any of these Euro windows that you've seen, they all have, uh, you, you might've noticed uh, when we went through our kitchen footage, they all have both a, uh, a, a day shade and a night shade. And originally it was flip-flopped, but Ember started installing them this way based on your feedback. Kind of like they added the MSL bunk to this based on your feedback. So like, if you want it like that, People can't really see up over it, but you can see down over it to still maintain some privacy right there. Now, there's two ways that you can get this. Uh, normally, uh, you have the, the 60 by 80 True Queen fixed bed uh, that we are looking at right here. 
But if you're familiar with Ember, you know that they do this very interesting thing where they actually allow you to kind of change this into a form of a Murphy bed. Now, before we get there, I do want to mention that once again, they have the same full width 30 inch entry door in the bedroom that they have in the living room. And very few manufacturers will ever do something like that. Also around the corner here, cracking this open, look at all the bedroom details, extra hanging storage, good dresser storage, and all of the drawers that you're looking at, those are all a residential soft close uh, mechanism, which I think is very cool. And again, if you do decide to go with the, uh, the sort of Murphy bedroom arrangement on this, uh, there's still storage below the sofa. You get two of those lagoon tables and you can use this like a little bit of a private office. So uh, this RV has office desk potential in the back. It's got office desk potential in the front. It's a party in the front and a party in the back. It's whatever you want it to be or not. Uh, so like if you're, if you're on a weekend where you do need it in bunk mode, you can still use the bedroom as an office. If you're on a weekend where you're not using it in bunk mode, you can use the back as an office. Or what if I know some working couples who you know work in full-time travel together, but they do different jobs. They need their own separate working stations. This is one of the smallest RVs I've ever seen that has the potential of a dual office function. First of all, any level of office function in RVs is exceptionally rare. It's as rare as hen's teeth, if you will, um, as rare as frog's hair, if you won't. And uh, you can call me Miss Jackson if you're nasty. <laughs> <laughs> but this RV has double office function. I think that's very cool. And I don't know, depending on what you do, if you if you go with a sofa instead of the dinette, maybe you could pack a third one in here. I'm not sure. I don't know you'd even need to. Amazing space around that toilet right there. No question there. This bathroom they use in their uh, their, their touring editions and some of the big tandem axle overlands in it, it just works. It does everything that I think you really need it and want it to. I even like the little grab handle they have there just for extra don't slip capacity in and out of the shower. So funny story here while you're looking at me standing in the shower with tons of headroom. Um, my father, getting a little bit older, started to get a little worried about slipping and falling in the shower. Totally reasonable. So my brother, who does um, home construction, came over and put a, uh, you know, like a, a walk-in shower in for him. The very first day my dad slipped and fell. Thankfully, he was okay. So the very first thing I did is I went out and I bought him some uh, no-slip mats to put in his brand new shower. Never fell in the old one that scared him. He only fell in the brand new one uh, that he put in so that he wouldn't fall. Figure that out. So if you're ever wondering why I'm such a klutz, I definitely come by it naturally. This apple fell straight down from the tree, and I love my dad. He's super cool. Keep an eye real quick as we close the slide on that countertop extension. <laughs> Make sure you fold that down. My recommendation, here's a little pro tip from Uncle Josh. Right next here, next to the slide button, put a little sticky note or a sticker or something that says counter. Just something to remind you. Now, when the slide closes, yes, we've cut off the direct access entry straight into the uh, the bedroom. So that's a thing to maybe consider. There is a way around that. Remember, there is a second door there. We're going to peek at that in just a second. They made sure the bathroom door is completely unobstructed if you're coming and going. And this new MSL system means that while you're traveling especially, you have new expanded cargo options that have never existed on one of these before. Like the 24BH, the 24MBH, they can't do this. Now you see it's like a straight shot up. I bet you could probably load some, not all, but some like double seat kayaks even straight up this thing. That's what I call a kayakoscopy, which, um, I would not recommend attempting personally, neither here nor there. But again, you do need to have what I call two-stage travel access. But if you go with the Murphy function, this also creates like a giant potential garage cargo locker situation. So depending on what you're doing, you, you can go pretty nuts. Yeah, I think this is one that you want to be careful. You don't overload your total cargo capacity because it actually has the space to potentially do it. Now, looking at the weights and measures of this one, very true to form in the uh, Ember Touring series. These are not lightweights. They're not attempting to be ultralights. They're not anything like that. You know, this, this trailer weighs a chunk more than almost anything else with a similar floor plan because it's bigger, thicker, heavier, uh, you know, bulkier all the way around, like taller, more cabinetry. All the extra things that go into this add a lot of extra weight. But as a result, 
it may also nudge up a suggested tow vehicle. Now real quick, you might notice how that light is kind of um, blinking over there on the opposite side of uh, that like vertical glow beam there, but the one on the left is solid. That is uh, actually, it's, it's not nose cap marker lighting, it's actually a blind spot monitor. So there's a trailer parked right off the corner of this ember that we're looking at. This RV literally throws radar out of its butt and detects if there's something in your blind spot where you may not be safe to turn and change lanes. Um, well, with that trailer there, you know, it's not safe. Now, the other light blinks occasionally. That's because there's something like a tree branch or a leaf or something that's moving and occasionally triggering that radar. Um, that's uh, why, so like you might be at a campsite and one of those beams might be lit and one of them might not be. Uh, that's a, uh, uh, sometimes I'll see in like the, uh, the Ember owners groups, people are asking like, what is going on? One of my lights is burned out. It's, it's not, that's not what it is. But if you didn't know that, that would definitely be your normal uh, explanation. It's interesting to me here on the Touring Edition, which is not really intended for like off-road use. This is made for heavy road use. Uh, they still maintain the Versa coupler, but I think the reason they do this is not so much if you want to swap it out for an articulating hitch, but some vehicles, like if you go out west and people have a lifted up truck, some people's platform ride height is higher, some people's is lower. That is something that may help you get kind of hitched up with this thing uh, a little more effectively. A little bit different variation of their powder-coated aluminum gearbox comes here on the Touring Edition. Up top is just a neat little place to like put some wheel chocks or something like that. Your uh, propane tanks, your uh, batteries are all uh, enclosed out here. Now, if you uh, go with the standard arrangement, your batteries would be outside. Uh, you can get this wired up with some lithium batteries that I'll actually go here, um, like those big giant dragonfly lithium game changer batteries that uh, would go potentially here in the pass-through cavity. Um, and uh, you could just repurpose that front storage box for like extra cargo. Now we're all prepped and ready for full um, side and rear view cameras. Uh, these have turn signal safety lighting. Again, tons of highway safety features going in on these. And obviously you've got that like almost Nautilus style enclosed uh, docking center right there. Um, we also have ourselves a, uh, a nice big pass-through and if you look up top, you'll see this actually includes its own picnic table. So you don't have to use the table at the park that God knows what happened to it before you got there. Because folks, stuff does. Stuff does happen on those tables. Now this is kind of interesting. You basically just flip this little uh, lever right here. The table drops down and you pull it out. And then you just slide the table in, push it up and it locks in place. So it's, uh, it doesn't take any kind of like cargo buckle straps. You, you don't have to be a pirate and learn how to tie knots to be able to use the thing, which is nice. Some quick construction points. Um, your, uh, everything but the roof basically is, uh, pretty much like laminated, aluminum framed, block foam insulated with, uh, like Asdell composite layering, top, bottom, inside out, upside down. Your roof, because they went with a, uh, centralized air ducting system is a more traditional wood truss roof system, but also due to the weight and the size of this and the fact that it's intended for heavy road use, it is kind of, um, good to have a, a, a certain place for stress to be able to express itself in the RV and wood constructed roofing is actually proven very functional for that, uh, over time. Now your patio awning covers both entry doors and I want to stress again the fact that it does have dual entry doors because if you are going to use this as a bunk model, and nothing says you have to use it as a bunk model, um, if you decide to put the kids to bed, uh, you know, and they're, the, the bunks are right next to that back door, and then you stay up and you do adult things and you hang around the campfire right here, well, if you want to come back in that door, you're right next to the bunks. You want to close that door, it's going to make noise. You don't want to disturb the kids. Being able to slide in and out of that front door to like grab a jacket or something like that can be really handy. Now, if you look up top on this one, you see the double solar panels, that's optional. By default, this has zero factory solar, zero factory inversion. Um, the optional package on this is 400 watts of solar and a, uh, what, do, what do I want to say? Um, 2000 watt inverter. Now, my understanding is there have been a small number of people who have like requested the Ember Overland Max solar package. And my understanding is that Ember has built a couple units like that, but it's, I guess you call it like a hidden option. It's not a normal thing. If that's something you're interested in, I'd be kind of curious, like leave me a comment. Let me know if that's a thing that you would, you'd like to see. 
And if it is something you really like to see, call our team. Chances are we can get something like that ordered for you. Now that little uh, power cooler fridge over there, that's just out here to, to provide uh, refreshments in the display. That's not part of the camper. The Goodyear Endurance Radials, the TPMS, and the torsion axle and suspension package that's gonna give you that awesome control and handling going down the road, that stuff is all uh, you know factory standard. Now, uh, once again, over here, instead of the, uh, the forced camp kitchen and then just small rear cargo space, they have the full-on MSL, the multifunction storage locker, basically. The, the, the Ember tracks, the removable bunks, the Swiss Army do whatever you want it to do kind of thing. Uh, this one's in hammock mode, uh, but again, it can be, you know, bunks, it could be desk, it could be desk and a bunk, it could be cargo, it could be dog kennels, uh, it, 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 could be, it could be about anything. But they still have uh, power outlets in the area if you want to add a mini fridge. They still have an outside gas grill cooker hooker if you want to kind of make your own camp kitchen, you can. Oh, look at this. You see that, uh, the, the pad that that's sitting on? That's actually <laughs> kind of like a cross section of the floor. That black core you're looking at, it's like a pure composite floor. Now that's actually not a full floor, it's just like a quick sample, but it's been raining the whole week. They left that stuff outside because it's, uh, the, the, all the material in it is, is waterproof, you know? It's good bones camping. Now the belly of this is enclosed and forced air heated. Radiant barrier, um, holding tank heaters are going to be factory standard on these. And you do also have um, a, uh, a zero to 100 degree rated, tested, cold, hot chamber proven at the Truma testing facilities uh, rating on these. Uh, you also have an accessory hitch and a bumper on the back. I mean, this is, this is the brand that does and instead of or, but as a result, it adds weight, it adds dollars, but it just, it does all of the things that I think you want an RV to do. So let me ask you this. There's a lot of different ways you could configure this RV. There's, um, you know, obviously all the variant forms of the, the, the MSL system, but the, in terms of options, you have the fixed bed, that's a, just a walk around queen or the private Murphy office desk den thing. Um, you can get the standard dinette or you could throw like a theater seat in the slide. And that's the thing. I, like, I think by default people look at this and call it a bunkhouse. I don't know that it has to be. I don't know that it does. I think that this could definitely be just a very functional couples model where you could repurpose that MSL space for something else and throw a theater seat in it. So I'm kind of curious how you would go about it. About the only thing this RV doesn't do is come in super lightweight and have awesome campsite window coverage. Although that MSL thing when opened up with the screen definitely does help, but it's, you know, you can't do that in screaming hot summertime. I'm talking, I'm still talking, I'm sorry. I'm gonna stop. When you're ready, we're ready. Check the link in the video description for pricing and availability. And folks, keep the suggestions coming because obviously they're listening. And until next time, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.